right, here we are, episode 30 of Merryweather's World. Pretty incredible. Hey, I see people joining our, hey, Kenneth, sorry about your truck. That sucks, man. Uh, so tonight, it's going to be a little different. Instead of just me talking and Miniweather talking, we got Professor Brandon Laurie Yay. here too. And tonight's subject is how to create your own zombie apocalypse. <laughs> and if we have time, how to prepare for a zombie apocalypse created by some other Dillweed. Um, do I have anything in my notes? Miniweather, who is also with us tonight. Let's say hi. Nope. She actually thought you all would forget about her because she hasn't been around for like two weeks. So, uh, Don't yeah. Have anything. Okay. Nope, just links to you. All right. So, yeah, we'll, we'll put up the usual links to Forging Texas and uh, uh, the, the Forging Texas Amazon store and also. To Professor Lowry's, uh, Lowry's <laughs> stuff. He has a really hard name to say. It's yeah. not easy like Vorderbrogen. It's yeah, like yeah, really yeah, yeah. And that's not, and and not short easy. And, yeah. and that has W's in it. <laughs> no, for those of you who are new to the show, uh, just a reminder, my name is Dr. Mark Merriweather Vorderbrogen, author of The Idiot's Guide Foraging, the website www.foragingtexas.com. Uh, Merryweather Forager on Instagram, where I post plants every day, and on Facebook here, the Foraging Texas website. So today, special guest, uh, we are going to talk about zombie creation. I will uh, say the biology professor here, uh, Professor Lowry, uh, has been interviewed on MTV, has done TED Talks on this sort of thing. Um, we actually go way back. Uh, we were trying yeah. to figure out it's more than a decade. Oops, what's yeah. going on? Okay. Because um, not only is he a science dude, biology, right. he is also a bushcrafter. So he spends a lot of time in the woods. We've had the pleasure, not nearly enough, of camping together, yeah, but right. we've done that. A big Renaissance Festival uh, fan, just like me and the family. Uh, and of course, the you know love of zombies and buying stuff to protect yourself from <laughs> zombies isn't that what it's all about it's oh, yeah. like collect it all so without further ado do you have anything oh uh yeah let me just show you quick so he has whoops that's not him right. oh that's him <laughs> okay so his website the bearded hobbit where he talks about different things he's been doing uh if you remember the old into the borderlands uh dot blogspot thing he talks about adventures he's going on, crafts he's doing, things he's building at home, that sort of thing. Uh, he also has whoops, a really good YouTube channel with all sorts of really interesting things, kind of science-based stuff to really improve your life. So uh, with that, let's get back to that. Okay, so Professor Laurie. Let's say, oh, oh, I, I do oh, have, oh, oh I do yep, have yep. One thing here. What, what, what? For you, good sir. Oh, I forgot to mention he's also a leather worker. So at this point, I have to return the favor, which I had planned on doing. Oh, yeah. So he yes. gets one of the four jean yes. bandanas made by me and Nicole Eplion and a lovely vinyl sticker. Perfect. You can use to promote me everywhere. And I I <laughs> was on the verge of actually purchasing one of these. I had it on my Father's Day list. So ah, I was like, ha. Oh, yes. So, Great. yeah, so here's the thing. If you end up Scholar. being a guest personage on <laughs> Merriweather's World, you too will get a free bandana. You don't even have to bring me cool leatherworking stuff. This is so nice. Yeah. It holds it approximately tw uh, 12 ounces, so it's a little flask. So it'll, it'll oh, yeah, perfect. and tonight's beer oh, yeah. is the Crawford Bach by Carbach. It's good stuff. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. So, okay. zombies. Yes. Let's say, hypothetically, I am a mad scientist. Okay. And I am tired of humanity and decide it's time to hit the reset button. I know there are, you know, a long mythos of zombies in history, but let's say I actually wanted to do that. I know there are different fungi and diseases that can affect the brain and cause different things. So what are some of the ways a person at home, let's say with an Amazon DNA kit. Just want to brew something up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, you know, just a small apocalypse. You know, I mean, the, the, the closest that I've kind of looked at is, is something viral based uh, because viral based you can easily pass that on. I mean, I know a lot of people kind of jump to uh, kind of like what's going on in Congo right now mm. with the uh, yeah. uh, the Ebola right uh, breakout. 
but even with something like that, like that's got to be pretty close proximity. But with the virus, there's a lot of uh, potential latency. Um, it can be uh, viable for hours just out. You could touch it on the table. Oh, like the Nordo virus that exactly. make people you sick know. on cruises. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, I've been on one cruise ship, and I was nervous <laughs> the whole time. I was going to get something and just be sick the rest of the, the, the cruise. Um, but, yeah, so something viral-based probably. Um, I mean, there's a lot of other cool ideas I know. I'm looking at something like a fungal zombie or something like that. It's really yeah. an interesting concept, um, but in terms of like transmission, it gets real, okay. it gets real tricky. Yeah, I know there's a a fungus that infects like ants and yes. causes them to climb to the top. Yes. you know whatever the highest structure they can. Yeah, and then die, and the fungus grows out of it exactly. and releases a spore up. So yeah, so that's and, the uh, the Ophicordyceps fungus. Yes. So yep. there's a. There's the, the cordyceps fungus, which is where it used to be placed, right, in terms of the, uh, the taxonomic name. It was right. in cordyceps, but it's since been moved out. And so cordyceps is, is one that a lot of people might know as like a, a food, not a, maybe a food or medicine. Uh, yeah, or it's a very else, strongly medicinal yeah, yeah, mushroom. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's been moved out, but um, what they've looked at is, I mean, this one species of it is everywhere. It's actually here in uh, North America. Um, so you can still find some some uh, insects that have this growing out of it. Uh, the game, uh, The Last of Us, um, is actually based off of that. And so you just um, got. I, I got you. Yeah, <laughs> that so I've, much. I've not played it because I don't have a PlayStation. So oh, maybe yeah. one day I will get there. That would be amazing. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I love it. But uh, um, if you're interested in that, um, a good book to read is called The Girl with All the Gifts. We saw the movie. Did you? Yeah. Hey. Excellent. What do yeah. you think? I liked the movie. Yeah. So, yeah, The Girl with All the oh, She also has gifts. There she is. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, The Girl with All the Gifts. It was a fungal-based thing. Yeah. Um, so it wiped out a lot of humanity. Right. Uh, turned them you know, into the mindless bite, bite, bite zombies. And then also pregnant women, it made like a human fungus. Oh, spoiler alert. Oh, yeah. Well, they, they show it right in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, The Girl with All the Gifts, it's a really yeah. good, intelligent zombie movie. And the, yeah, if you, if you pick up the book, it's a fairly short read, and it goes into a lot more detail that obviously okay. you just can't yeah, get, get into. Oh, no, I'll have to films. check out the book then. Yeah, it's fantastic if you're into the, the Ophicordyceps type thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, the transmission of that is, is really tricky because fungi would have to transmit by by spores, spores, which they, they can do, and they do pretty well, because, I mean, that's why we have all of these nice air filters for mm -hmm. allergies and stuff like that. But we have a really good immune system against against that. Yep. So yep. unless you can find a lock and key, which is... Which I, I would be mad easy. science. There you go. That's the mad scientist part of it. And I'm totally okay with, like, saying, well, is that possible? Well, I mean, anything's so, kind of possible. Possibly, yeah, you would. Really. You could almost graph some of the viral ability to penetrate a cell membrane. You know the the markers right. and stuff. Yeah, graph that. Oh wow, this is cool. Graph yeah. it onto. Okay, Iran. Anyone yeah. from Iran, please go yeah. away now, Russia. Um, but yeah, you could do a weird viral fungi yeah, blend. Yeah, and, and and with viruses, I mean, nature does that all the time, especially like pigs. Yeah. Like so. I know everybody's out there like, what about swine flu or what about any kind of flu? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like, we can give pigs the flu. They'll pick up some other flu mm -hmm. and it mixes. Yeah, and they we... give it back to us. And then it's like, well, now we're off to the races with some zombie right. pigs. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> at that point. Scary. All right. It looks like we already have a question. Sure. Actually, people are saying the mic is having... A a little bit of an issue oh, fluctuating no. and the volume is not quite there. okay maybe we just need to because i got it Sorry. cranked all the way up we'll just move just, closer i can be yeah. a little bit closer want people to be able to okay. hear you sorry about that no problem um yeah this is why and tv shows are always right next to each other yeah, right. yeah we, we're cheap we have one microphone thank you tina um just a reminder after the show uh, i'm i'm behind but uh, i take the video from these broadcasts clean up the audio up it where it needs to be up to you know take it out and then post Perfect. it on the youtube if you want to pass, uh, post the YouTube link. Perfect. Um, so yeah, it'll it'll be on the Dr. Merriweather YouTube channel too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. So the the fungus. Um, one of the things in movies yeah. that always happens is something you know, uh, as a, like World War Z. Mm -hmm. Someone gets bit, and you know, like in ten seconds later, they're a zombie. Right. Yeah. And that was that 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 an infection could not reproduce that no, quickly. Could it, no. No, um, you know, 
you can get into the literature and, and say, get on like the Mayo Clinic or CDC website or WHO and kind of look at a lot of these uh, viruses or diseases and kind of look at symptoms and onsets and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so World War Z is, is extremely fast. Yeah. Um, but if you want to look for something at like a, a film that's as close to kind of a, a viral outbreak, um, Contagion. I've heard of it. I have not seen it. Contagion that. is actually pretty pretty good. They actually um, asked um, a CDC. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera. <laughs> um, um, they actually asked some CDC uh, scientists uh, how accurate was that film, and they said it's probably one of the most accurate films that would portray like an actual outbreak of some type of a virus. Um, in terms of latency and and mm -hmm. kind of how long it would actually take. So that one, even though it's not a zombie movie. I say watch that one. Uh, that's a pretty good one because it at least kind of gives you the idea of how things get moved around and transferred. Okay. But yeah, it's, it would take, I mean, it takes quite some time for a virus to kind of yeah, get into your body. Usually, you know, several days. It takes a couple and, days. And, and that's what's scary about it. Um, it can spread. Yeah. I mean, you can be um, infectious of the flu virus before you actually show symptoms, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So imagine that that's a zombie virus and now you're infected, but you have, no, I know, right? <laughs> that you have no idea that you're actually infected, but you're walking around and infecting other people. So yeah. a lot of times in the, in the, in the films and the literature and stuff, when you talk about like zombies and stuff that it spreads quickly because of the bite, I say it would spread quickly because of the latency that nobody mm -hmm. would know that it's even there until it's, third of the population is already just start infected. showing symptoms right yeah. so what's interesting about this i'm going to i'll bring it up is um i also teach uh, i teach biology but I also teach environmental science um and what i actually do is i use um zombies uh as a way to communicate how things move through the environment mm. um like like disease or viruses okay. and we call those uh density dependent factors and it's a big ecological concept in learning about, you know, how populations function out in the world okay. and stuff like that. But um, in one of my classes, we actually watch World War Z. Oh. <laughs> and that's what we talk about. We talk about density dependent factors um, as a way to, uh, or rather, the zombies as a way to describe those those things. So it's really fun. So mm -hmm. I get to I get to talk about zombies all the time, which is yeah. awesome. You know, and that also leads to another thing. Well, we're, we're talking about, like, you get two different illnesses, viral illnesses at the same time and they can you know mutate and blend and mm. turn into some new thing a zombie vaccine would be almost impossible yeah <laughs> i mean you would think part of it would be a rapidly mutating well it may not I mean, be yeah it may but not it, be. i mean it, but it's all it, speculation right as to how yeah, quickly all this, yeah, yeah right <laughs> we're trying to figure this thing out right so yeah. it's not us i promise um but yeah, I mean, the the, um, the the one thing about um, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Uh, virus uh, vaccines oh, and yeah. preventing. And... So um, what, something that that's brought up a lot is you know, um, like the flu virus. Like we have to kind of anticipate the, that. Right, you have to guess way, which. One. We kind of have to guess which one's going to be it. So um, the the other thing that contagion actually brought up was how quickly um, they could produce a vaccine. For really this, for this virus and it's not like overnight oh like yeah that's think. what i was thinking it's going to take, take a months oh to, yeah, yeah yeah so and all that time there's more people getting infected, infected and, and spreading this, it right? and, yeah yeah Ooh. so yeah once you start going down this rabbit hole don't go down this rabbit hole <laughs> because you just start thinking of all these crazy scenarios even yeah. though it's like and it's far out there. It's worse if you're a scientist because you can really, you know, talk uh, yourself yeah. into. Some, yeah, sometimes real... you're like, I wonder if. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I mix, wait, no. Right? Yeah, yeah. No. So, yeah, it's interesting. The uh, so viruses. Now we talked about rabies as like a weaponized rabies once, yeah. and that might be a good source of virus. Yeah. Imagine like. Because I know, in at least in some animals, it causes that extreme thirst that right. causes them to like do crazy stuff. Right. Yeah. And even in humans, I believe it causes that same. You, yeah, you get. There's a lot of different symptoms with, with rabies, which is pretty crazy. Um, I if, if I remember, I'm trying to remember myself, but yeah, I think there is something to do with at the beginning of like thirsty, but then at the end, you're you're actually scared of water. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you can't about swallow. That. Right. Yeah. It's really weird. Um, the thing with rabies, um, and I think they addressed it in uh, 28 Days Later, mm -hmm. was it was a rabies virus that acted much quicker. Right. Right. Because rabies right now, for if you're if you're not familiar with rabies, you can get bit by a rabid animal and be perfectly fine. You do have rabies, but it acts very, very slowly. Um, so that's why you can go get a shot afterwards and you're, oh, okay. you're fine. So, but if you're a bit closer to your brain, you don't have a lot of time left mm. before you get the vaccine. Not like you're going to die or anything like that. <laughs> um, but you need to act very quickly okay. because it takes a long time. So if you're getting bit by the hand, which is what most people, it takes a long time for that to travel. So is it the virus from the bite traveling or is it infecting cells and they're infecting? It's, yeah, it's infecting. Yeah. Okay. So it's a chain so it's reaction. Yeah. And it does, okay. I mean, it, if I remember correctly, it, 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 I mean, it'll move through just all your stuff. Yeah. And so that, it's going to be an exponential growth too, because I mean, it's doubling right. and doubling. And yeah. so you have a little bit of time and then you have no time. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you want to get, get treated. If you get yeah. yeah. Bite. Animal and, bites, and, things like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Weird human bites. There, there was a guy um, in India that had rabies that bit an orderly. He was in a hospital, and he was bitten. And I, and I got an alert because I had Google alert uh, set up uh, for rabies. And I wonder why. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then I saw it. And I was like, Oh my God, this is it. It's here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, I'm ready. I knew it. Um, but yeah, so just it, there's just some weird stuff out there. Yeah, especially and, with viruses and. What, what's really crazy, I was going to mention a minute ago, was um, uh, in Africa, bushmeat. Right. Right. So people go out and they go hunting and they'll, they'll just whatever. hunt whatever, whatever yeah. crosses the path they're killed. So microbiologists are going over there and they're like, we don't know what some of this stuff even is. They're just discovering it as they kill these animals. They're <laughs> yeah. like, we don't know what this is. And here it is. We'll you know? call that Thursday supper. What's the Latin name for Thursday? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like I said, and as... You know, the world has become smaller because there's more people coming together yeah. and yeah. airports. A, a friend of mine was down uh, from Minnesota for a business trip, flew down, mm -hmm. was staying in a, one of the really nice hotels downtown. He arrived on Sunday evening. He woke up, well, on Wednesday he was feeling like crap, and Thursday morning he woke up just sick as a dog, right. unable to, with a horrible viral infection, ear infection oh, and man. stuff. And I'm just thinking, you know, you're you're... In an airport, you're in a international hotel. Yeah, you're gonna get something. Yes. Yeah. We were and, talking and, about the uh, just on the crew, we did a Disney cruise a few years ago, and everywhere along the hallway, there were just people with yes. the the hand sanitizer. Yeah. Just you know, and do it. Yeah. Every time oh yeah. Chance, every time care, you know, by every elevator, by yep. every staircase, by every food device. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a. Um, I was a. I went to one of the Texas Master Naturalist hmm. meetings, and they had uh, someone from Customs Ooh. from the International Airport. And the amount of stuff that comes through Customs that they catch is crazy. So they're like, what about the stuff we can't, like we miss? Mm -hmm. But they were telling us that in some of these uh, instances, they've, they've come across obviously different birds and animals, but also um, meat, like raw <laughs> meat that they're just carrying over. And I'm like, wait. Raw meat, meat, not even cooked, like no jerky, no, just yeah. raw. So, like, how much stuff gets passed That's through true. airplanes and airports and all that stuff? It's really wild. That is, yeah, <laughs> scary. Yeah. Um, it also sounds like something my dad would do. Um, he's always trying to send me home with venison and things like that, right. just frozen. You can just put it in your luggage. Yeah, no, right. I'm, I'm not going to put raw venison in my luggage. You, you mentioned venison. That's that's um something that people are concerned with right now in some of those areas is the wasting, the wasting disease, disease, right? Yep. Which is kind of the same thing as Kroonsfeld's, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Kroonsfeld's Jacobs disease. Right. Um, Basically eats holes in your brain. Yeah, you get these weird uh, uh, prions that are these misshapen uh, proteins and they cause all kinds of issues with your with your brain. And so... There's some evidence to suggest that if you eat infected meat, that there's a chance, maybe not 100%, uh, that if it can be transmitted. Because right. basically it's mad cow disease for, right. for, for deer. For deer. Yeah. For deer. So no. some areas people are a little bit, bit nervous. Because I've, I've thought about, well, what about, you know, something like a 
a prion. Yeah, because they're even lower on the scale than viruses. Yeah. But they still so manage rare. to reproduce. So are they yeah. RNA or so it's it's a it's a it's a protein. So it's a chain of amino acids. Mm -hmm. And what it's doing is it's just an abnormal shape. Oh. And it will touch it can only touch other proteins, other okay. other, uh, other 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 prions. And it'll touch them and cause them to change their shape too. So wow. they're like mini miniature zombies. Ooh. A you starting know? point. I mean, yeah. ooh. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. But that's how I think of prions that's how i think of viruses because they're i mean the goal of a zombie is to replicate itself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well that's exactly what a prion that's exactly what a what well, a virus ever, does yeah I mean, you know so i'm like they're miniature zombies cool. so zombies are real they're just viruses they're very small yeah they're just now. very small hmm now that leads to another going back to the pigs yeah there are there more pigs on the planet than humans I mean, could it be that oh, one of these diseases know. could you know, suddenly it starts with zombie deer or zombie yeah. pigs. I know uh, in Asia right now they're having a huge problem with the, a, a pig virus that's yeah. wiping out yeah. you know, millions that. of yeah. pigs, and they're afraid it will you know come over here yeah. or to others. And, you know, suddenly we'll be a, a world without bacon. Mm. That's not a world I want to be no, in. No, no, bring on the zombies. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. But, how, I would assume that there's got to be more There's, pigs than humans right it's gotta be i don't know, I I don't know, my I don't wife. know she's from iowa i'm not there you go maybe uh, maybe she knows i know in iowa the pigs outnumber humans and That's here in I texas mean. with all the feral pigs oh yeah no doubt yeah yeah Ooh. there it well, is can you imagine zombie feral hogs no that would no. suck <laughs> i think that would be worse than human zombies maybe no yeah, maybe not i don't know i don't know well don't it'd don't probably know. be harder to kill yeah yeah and harder to stop That'd be tough. Any questions? Oh, we've got a lot. Oh, oh, okay. oh, sorry, oh sorry, sorry. Every time I raise my hand, it's really well, you gotta, you gotta, like, Are we doing a good sound? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay, everyone cool. seems to be fine. Okay. All right, so first one, what about special carriers? And then once the carriers are gone? Uh, so like the vectors, say like a okay. squirrels or mosquitoes or something. So if we just look to kind of normal biology right now, there's tons of vectors of everything, but they're still around. Right, so a uh, lot of times point. they're not yeah. even affected by that. Like right? West Nile disease, yeah. West Nile's still around. Uh, uh, rabies is around because it's it's just hangs out and you know, raccoons or skunks or whatever okay. uh, hmm. are out there and they're asymptomatic, right? So All they right. can just be a carrier of that. So even if you get rid of, you know. All of the zombies, if there's still a, a vector or you know that carrier that's out there, yeah. it could still be sitting out in the, in the population. Because they, they point out that it's not in the virus's best interest to quickly kill its host. Correct. It yeah. wants to spread around. So the yeah. best case is it infects one animal that it doesn't kill, but that animal then yeah. goes around and spreads it to a bunch of right. other right. things. So yeah, I mean, and that's <laughs> kind of the goal of parasites and everything. Someone adds, or Uncommon Bees actually adds, oh. there are only 2 yeah. billion pigs on the planet. Only 2 billion? We need to increase those pig numbers. That's really surprising. Two, yeah, I would have. I would have expected a lot more. I figure there, half of them are here in Texas. Gotta be. And the other half are in Iowa, and there's like four in China. Well, wow. Okay. Learn something today. Awesome. Yeah. Two billion there's pigs. Two... A lot of questions. Okay. okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, go in. Yeah. All right. So a friend had a fight with his 13-year-old grandson <laughs> for terrifying his 10-year-old sister, claiming scientists found a zombie that eats your brain or something like that. He pointed to an article on the web that had zombies in the title, but he never read the article. Turns out scientists had just named something zombie. It's not a virus, but something smaller. Clarification. Okay, I'm gonna guess it was the brain-eating amoeba. That's oh, my guess. Yeah, that would make um, sense. Yeah. So Naglaria phalari is the, and again, if I'm mispronouncing these, I'm I'm so sorry. Um, it's a uh, it's an amoeba, right? And so the problem with a lot of this is a journalist sees something and throws the word zombie in it because it's a hot button keyword clickbait. and it clickbait yeah exactly click, <laughs> yeah. clickbait and so unfortunately the word gets tossed around a lot so um a little bit about that it's not an intentional parasite um it's an accidental infection of this amoeba and unfortunately um the survival rate is somewhere around five to ten percent it's very low um we have it a lot here in the south pretty much yeah, everywhere florida, I know from florida all the way over here um, where you see it is in warm waters, 
And the way that it works is it's just naturally out in the water systems, but uh, it usually affects kids because they get water up the nose. And what happens is this amoeba actually attaches to, there's a nerve right back here mm. in your nose and it follows that nerve back to your brain. And <laughs> it just wants to live. So it has to eat and reproduce and there's nothing there but brain tissue and Which it causes meningitis and just starts having a cascade of symptoms. Um, yeah, it's pretty terrible actually. Yeah. Um, especially since the survival rate is, is so low. I don't want to go in the water. No, anymore. I know <laughs> it, that's the thing with, with, with like being an, a biologist or somebody that works mm -hmm. in public health is when you learn all these things, you're like, Oh my God, that's terrible. And then you're like, I don't want to go do anything ever again, <laughs> ever. I took a parasitology class. I never wanted to eat anything, <laughs> not even vegetables. because You could still get them from that too. You know, I don't eat sushi anymore because there's so many internet videos of I people know. with eyes full of oh. worms. and Don't get on the internet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Next question. What about the preserved prehistoric animals they are finding as ice melts? Is it possible that there are preserved viruses that could then be a threat? Oh, it's completely possible. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that is a protocol that the, the scientists do have to keep in mind mm -hmm. when they are collecting these samples and defrosting them and so forth and making sure that they can't escape because we have no defenses against it. Um, yeah, I mean, they're finding really good intact mammoths That's, and yeah. all these things and that, recently there was the wolf the prehistoric yes, wolf that was so cool yeah that was and man. whenever i saw the picture i was like wow that was really well preserved <laughs> yeah um well so, even otzi the iceman yeah you know it yeah could have been, you know i've always i've always joked about like you know, the curse of the mummy. I'm like, well, what if it was just some bacteria or virus that's just been latent in the pyramid for 5,000 years and somebody got it and they didn't have an immune system? There for was it. actually a theory on that, that it was, was a fungal okay. spores. That makes sense that, to me. You know, that were, they're from that's there. how zombies starts. Yeah. The Egyptians are coming back yeah. to get us. Okay, what else? Any others? All right. Um, somebody asked about a prion scenario, but you all kind of already covered that. So. Yeah, the okay. prion. Prions, the problem is getting it from one host to the next. That's the tricky part. Um, it would have to be something where, say, if I was infected, that I would want to bite you or transmit it. But usually the way it transmits is through nerve tissue. Nerve tissue. Yeah. So I'd really have to so get, get it into your nerve system and so then have some exposed nerves. I wonder if I'm a sure. virus could meld with a uh, prion and, and do well I mean but, I mean they'd have to like in the the like, viruses are a lot of junk DNA yeah I mean they don't they yeah. don't really meld with much anything else but other yeah. other type, similar sense. type viruses because I mean the only thing can... that might work is so like uh, vaccine it's a it's a virus that they use to they used to use 20 years ago to insert dna into other like bacteria and mm -hmm, so forth mm -hmm. and it had it was like a big bus it had a big hollow space that they started packing right like nano silver and stuff like that to yeah. try and fight cancers yeah. with. and so you know you'd have to have the virus grow around a big swarm of these prions prions yeah but then you the, would you would have to make the virus be able to create it would have to be with the instructions to create that specific prion. Yeah. So well, in engineered viruses, I mean, that's getting to... that's getting way out there too. Okay, yeah. so and, have... and it would be easier to go other ways to take the brain effect. Oh, so like the taxa plot, the, the, the cat. Uh, yeah, the cat one, yeah. Let's talk about that. Or, are there any other questions? Oh, yeah, yeah. Someone had a question. Sure. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. What about psychobiotics that are part of the brain gut microbiome access Ooh, good question yeah Maybe it's beginning to affect like people in depression based on their yeah there's a lot of research that that shows or suggests at this point that uh microbiome has a pretty important role in in so many different things and mental right? health mental and health other things, all these yeah. different things which we'll we'll talk about the the cat one in just a second okay um and that'll that'll be our segue but i don't know i've not really spent a lot of time thinking like how yeah. Because there's so many different factors that that come into play before you get to that point. If you think you about know? it, though, I mean, the human brain is easily adjusted by chemicals. Mm -hmm. Not well adjusted by, but right. you can 
you know, with certain chemicals, you can induce rage in people. You can induce yeah. hunger. You can induce depression. You can induce euphoria. Yeah. So if going back to say a genetically modified, um, you know, if you had like a a well, like a lichen, it's a fungi bacteria mm -hmm. mixture. Mm -hmm. You have all the chemical factory abilities of the bacteria. Mm -hmm combined with the penetrating spread of a virus you could basically infect someone with an organism that then produces the drugs that would right cause you know. the, the trick with all of this is sneaking around our own immune system because mm. we have a pretty awesome immune system I have a couple, keep going. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was yeah. going to say, you know, you know, just trying to get we all of had. A oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so it gets really tricky sometimes to get around that. Right, um, right. So when you start combining so many different things, it's <laughs> you, you get more make, handles. It, it gets, the, yeah, you the get, you get system more together. kind of recognition that that is not supposed to be here, kind of good, thing. Good, good point. But I mean, we're we're onto something, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> but I I wanted to mention because yeah. I've shown the studies like a lot of the autoimmune diseases and the allergies and stuff that are coming yeah. because people they're in too sterile of an environment, especially yeah. as kids. Yes, like asthma is a big thing. They they've shown that, that asthma is almost non-existent in third world countries mm -hmm. and amongst uh, like the Amish and you know people that are constantly you know in the bacteria right. in the dirt. They yeah. they basically have a a more effective immune system. So, by keeping people away from the dirt, we're prepping them for a zombie apocalypse. So another reason to go forage yeah, go, and go out go in the play, dirt. Get yeah. Dirty. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Play in the mud. Have your some, kids play in the mud. Have your daughters play in the mud, <laughs> just to avoid lupus later on. Yeah, there's some really cool research showing that people that had uh, like pinworms, more infections of pinworms and stuff, had less allergies. And I'm like. Is the solution to allergies pinworms? I hope not. Well, <laughs> but the solution to Montezuma's revenge is tapeworms and food poisoning in, in general. So I don't know which one I want. <laughs> yeah, I tapeworms or, or, or yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. That's that's that's, <laughs> no, that's really not a hard Pick choice. I yeah, don't want yeah, tapeworms. That's, that's true. That's true. It's scary looking. Oh yeah, like, don't look at it. It's bad. Okay, that was a mistake. All right, we go to another question. <laughs> Is there anything with the pine pollen androgen compounds and an increase in human aggressiveness during that period? Okay, this is a question more directed towards me. So the, the pine pollen, it's very, very similar to testosterone mm -hmm. to the point that it, it can cause a testosterone replacement effect. And so one of the things I've often wondered is, like when Houston is coated in the yellow powder, do the incidences of road rage mm -hmm. increase? So imagine a, ooh, a a bacteria that produces lots and lots of testosterone to just put everyone in a yeah. hyped up you know roid rage sort of effect mixed yeah. with zombies uh, with rabies and yeah especially uh, just thinking about that yeah I, I never thought about that. that's a good question um, I mean because there's we, a book in here somewhere yeah there really is right um, so there is so much po now pine pollen a lot of people blame um, allergies on pine pollen it's pretty heavy. Um, People can be allergic to it, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we get so in order to breathe it in, it's like I said, it's pretty heavy. You kind of have to get into it. But we get so much that, of course, we're gonna breathe yeah. some of that in. I've never thought about that. I don't know. That's interesting. Okay, so all we need is a virus that increases testosterone, or a bacteria that produces it. Right. Then, well, yeah. actually, no, it'd be easy because <laughs> if, like if, if you reprogram, well, you'd have to have it. You know, target the, I guess the. Pituitary gland. Yeah, yeah did you want to? The... You'd have to start changing hormones. Could you? I guess if it was a big enough DNA, you could. You know, your skin would start producing. The, yeah, and that's a the thing. Viral like, form of testosterone. What's What's really interesting is like you know we're we're playing these kind of scenarios out. Like you need a little bit of this to do this, but when you watch like some of the zombie films, like it has a huge just reaction on the whole body, mm -hmm. not just aggression, yeah, but. It's, Decay. Yeah, you get decay. You get all this kind of crazy stuff, and it's very odd. Well, if you th like, but if the, if, if, the, if but think if the DNA is now eighty percent committed to producing more virus, not repairing the damage. Yeah, I mean that would add up. I'm yeah. just saying, like, so It'd be quickly, like, like this yeah, quick yeah, changes. You're yeah. like, what? That, that, yeah. Good point. Good point. I was saying it's like full body scurvy sort of thing. <laughs>
Do we have a question? We have another question. I think people are like, are you liking this episode? Because I'm having fun. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> All right, my family is battling what seems to be a stomach flu, which coincidentally Ugh. happened after swimming in a lake in East Texas. Could that be related, linked? Very likely. Yeah, if you got it, yeah. I mean, in Boy Scouts, we'd call it beaver fever, oh. where if you drank some bad water from a stream yeah. or something, there's all sorts of protozoa and guardia in there and things that will give you yep. stomach flu. Um, yeah, stay hydrated. Yeah, Boil like, some oak galls. Yeah, if you, yeah. If it's more than a couple of days, I'd be a little yeah. nervous then. Yeah. Yeah, and, and don't puke up your nose. I don't think this is actually a question, but she brings up a really good point. Miss Carrie Hyatt says mountain cedar pollen plus a cold virus. Okay, so because the cold would attack you. Yeah. Um, you feel bad already. You would just feel really bad. It's not going to blend in a way. I, I can't see how it would blend in a way to like become a, a cedar virus. No, I mean like an allergy, I think. Oh, plus okay. Like oh. a cold virus, a flu, yeah. something like that. Well, the issue oh, with that good. is if your immune system is weakened, all the other virus that are hanging out in your body can start, you know, they're no longer being battled. So then they can start reproducing. You get the chance of a cell being infected with two different types of viruses or more. Yeah. And then you get some different mutations. So... Yeah, what's what's really interesting and, and also frightening is we actually have a lot of latent viruses mm -hmm. and viral DNA in our own DNA that we've had for millennia. millennia. Um, if you've had chickenpox, you still have chickenpox, mm -hmm. right? It's just hanging out. Polio. Um, po yeah. My, right. my father had polio. It's still, it's still there. It affects him, yeah, to this so, day. What if kind of like the walking dead and the walking dead, the premise is everybody has this, but when you die, it resurrects you kind of thing. But I'm like, well, what if that's kind of the case? We have a, this, this DNA that codes for some type of zombie virus that we're walking around with, but you don't have to die. You just have to get some trigger or whatever just that weakened might be. enough where your body can't and then, fight it. And know? then all of a sudden everybody, everybody's a zombie now. I guess if everybody's a zombie, it won't matter. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. I won't be a zombie. Yeah. All right. That's the end of the questions. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so let's go to the cat virus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's fascinating. So um, there is something called uh, Toxoplasma gondii, and it is a uh, protozoan, and most of us have actually had it before. Uh, most of the world's population has probably been infected with it, um, but because we're healthy and we just shed it and we get rid of it, we're good. Um, However, not all people um, have that. It stays with them quite some time. So there's some evidence to suggest that it can affect uh, our own behaviors, right? Yeah. So um, the, the normal biological cycle is it goes from rats to cats. And what happens, as we were mentioning earlier, is a rat or a rodent that is infected with it kind of loses its fear yeah. of cats. So then it just will wander up to the cat and just kind of hang out while the cat eats it, gets infected, and then it passes it in its feces, and then it comes into contact with the rodents again, and then the cycle starts and back So if over. you're cleaning the cat's litter box. <laughs> so the concern is if you're a pregnant female, this is probably where you've heard it, is you're not supposed to change the, the kitty litter. Mm -hmm. um, because if you become infected with it while you're pregnant, it can't have an effect on the developing fetus. Um, so that's kind of scary. Yeah. But it's not just cats. I don't want to be like anti-cat or anything like that. Um, I'll, I'll defend cats for a little bit here. Um, you can get it from eating uh, undercooked meats. Um, you can also get it from like in the garden, like going through dirt meat. and stuff like that. Um, but most of us don't have to, to worry about it too much. Um, cats, if your cat is indoors all the time and you don't have rodents, yeah, you're probably done to worry about it. It's more about them killing something and then bringing it in the house. But... I what I was going to say was what's interesting about this is when we think about how we do drug research, we do it on rodents a lot of times oh, yeah. because it's so similar to our own system. Maybe not, it's not exactly the same, but similar enough. And they're cheap. And they're cheap, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever they started realizing that this had an effect on rodents, the question became, well, does it have an effect on us as similar mammals? And my understanding is it does. Right? Yeah, there's some, there's some, there's, there's a couple of different research papers that came out. One says, no, we didn't find anything. And the other one said, yeah, we kind of found something. 
Um, more study definitely to be needed on this, but it seems like there might be something to this that people have, that have these infections uh, that can't get rid of them or that they're constantly being reinfected have a higher incidence of risk taking. That's what I've heard. Like yeah. the base jumpers. Base the, jumpers. Yeah. Uh, maybe a higher incidence of, of uh, suicide or dementia, uh, promiscuity, Prom yeah. um, car accidents. Um, there's even a paper that came out that said um, people that are more likely to be entrepreneurs or businessmen yeah, also have a higher incidence of this infection, either that they've been infected recently or they still have that kind of infection, I suppose around, which is interesting. It would be against medical ethics to sell the bacteria. You want to be an entrepreneur? Here's yeah. Take take this. Yeah, this, I, this I, I could see like Las Vegas going. Well, let's just put some in the water, in the water shall yeah, we? Right? <laughs> so we can talk about like you know, dementia was one that I thought was really interesting because we kind of make the comments the crazy old cat lady, and in my mind, I'm like, well, what if she's just constantly being reinfected because oh. of her cats? Maybe that's part of it i don't know again yeah. this is all speculation i've you know, not done that just, research there's other researchers out yeah, there doing that i'm just picturing the crazy old cat lady risk taker doing risk, yeah you know, do a like, skydiving with her yeah cats or, or you know or right? you know train surfing or stuff uh, okay we had a question oh, sorry. <laughs> how do zombies keep moving around when they're dead and metabolism seizes that's <laughs> yeah so for this. so you just have to go with it on that one yeah. um people will argue what is a zombie and what's not and also what is death and, what and is death? you know the the body a yeah. lot of things keep going for a long time yeah. in in our particular discussion we're looking at an infection so the yeah. the human body is still functioning, functioning. and alive yeah. the brain may be gone but the body itself so we're not talking actual undead sort of yeah things, so. yeah we uh my wife and i actually uh watched recently uh train to busan which is a Korean film. Oh. Great movie. Okay. <laughs> Great movie. So one of her complaints is the same as that you had as well, was there were these, the zombies fell off a building, really high up, crashed on cement, got up and walked off. And yeah. she's like, but... They would be pieces. Yeah, you'd be pieces. Yeah, like, even though, yeah, set, your yeah. body's animated, your bones are broken, your muscles yeah. can't work. So yeah. we kind of went down that rabbit hole of like, why that's not real right so with those zombies you just kind of have to like roll with it and be like okay i know it's fake and that's all fun but yeah i'm not a i'm not a big like you're dead you're decaying yeah and you're still going like my my argument that i see a lot like is the disembodied hand yeah crawling, just keep going but, not yeah. gonna happen um is uh fast versus slow zombies i always said if it's a newly infected it's fast yeah if it's, it's an old be... it's slow and then if it's dead it's it's, really you know, old. Loot the body. Yeah, it's not doing anything. Yeah, loot the body. See if you can find some treasure in there. Yeah, just, just you know, spread it with Lysol or something first. Some bleach. Mm -hmm. Question? Yeah, we got another one. Do zombies continue to rot? And what holds them together if they rot? I assume like ligaments. Now, that yeah. would be interesting. If... Tissue. Ooh, I'm just... I'm, 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 I've entered a rabbit hole in my brain. Uh -oh. Let's say the infectious disease starts like if you're a zombie you probably don't need your kidneys so it starts converting yeah. the you know it eats the kidneys it eats the liver you know it's slowly devouring your internal organs to fuel your movement to search mm -hmm. for new victims perhaps that would take some well, doing. once once all that energy is gone though where do you get it so that yeah. limits the lifetime yeah. of that that zombie i'm i'm a proponent of they do start decaying yeah i say pretty quickly but Maybe that decay is because they're using their own bodies for that that energy. Yeah, if they can't get. But yeah. if you look at I don't know, people with eating disorders and things like that, how they'll stop eating and stop fueling themselves. Yeah. Zombies might go that route. Yeah, they can go like, quite a while. I mean, long enough to take out a city. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all you have to do is bite a few people, and you're you've accomplished yeah, what you're supposed to accomplish. Without eating, you can still you know go. Yeah. They, the 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 problem would be drinking water yeah that's a good well, I mean, that, if, would, that would kind of limit you to about a three days zombie if, life if then, you are a successful zombie and you're biting people and you're drinking getting blood you're getting blood that might i don't know if it's enough though and there's the yeah. salts and all yeah. that well, we need to start well i mean if you're drinking I mean, blood it should be isotonic to your own system but if you digest your own stomach you know, your intestines because you need your intestines uh, yeah, to do yeah i so, don't know 
we're running into the anatomy problem of yeah and, and so th this leads me to think the the lifespan of a converted zombie is no more than three days yeah yeah that's that's, that's i'm going to put from a scientific point of view because yeah, it stops yeah. drinking even if it's drinking blood I don't know if you know if it's, especially if it's decaying and, yeah. and so forth. That it actually work. probably won't be very decayed at that yeah. point. I mean, it, it's and if it is using up its its organs, it is eating without drinking. Yeah. So it's going to use up its own fluids. That, so yeah. they're going to be like desiccated zombies. Yeah. Zombie jerky. Yeah. So that's a zombie. If we're talking infected, that's a whole other ball game. Everything still works. Yeah. Right? But if yeah. we're talking you Walking Dead type zombie, yeah, you're gonna. Hmm. So now there's a whole thing like, what if the zombie goes dormant until some sensory input triggers right. it, and that could work. And that's and you actually see that in quite a few uh, kind of zombie shows is that they do remain still, and I've often thought that that's exactly what that is is it's a it's a a way to re retain that energy right, right. for that spreading like oh yeah. the jump scare or whatever, but it's really just conservation of energy. energy. Yeah, yeah, and they I probably can the sense. <laughs> I don't, but <laughs> they. Uh, they could probably sense like you're an infected. I'm not going to eat you. You know, there's some chemical olfactory or some yeah. sign giving off. So it only goes after the uninfected. Yeah. So it yeah, that was the, the again premise of ever, Walking Dead kind yeah. of kind of concept. The, uh, the like there's a record. The longest someone has gone without eating is is months. It was a it was a I, I want to say a French guy trapped in a cave. He was lost in a cave and he just sat there against the wall. There was some water dripping down, so he was able to drink, and he just sat in the dark for, you know, over a month. Wow. Um, yeah, look it up, and it, it, yeah, it's terrifying. Eventually, he was found, but he was just so self-consumed. Yeah. <laughs> that you know they basically had to carry him out on a wow. you know, two I can rubber only bands. Imagine a, mental state. Yeah, that. it's that's it's insane. like, yeah, that's gonna be scary. Any other? Someone asked about flesh-eating bacteria. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, I, that would be a bad see that would slow down yeah the zombie spread because if you if you no longer have your muscles and and so forth that you you from a scientific evolutionary point of view you want to spread yourself as much as possible so things that limit the spread are bad yeah mm. yeah something airborne is probably the easiest way yeah. uh to go even you know like zombies biting yeah, I get that. That works in close proximity. Yeah. But if you really want to infect the world, it's viruses. No, here's a question. I, I would say, from again, from an evolutionary point of view, the mm -hmm. ability to go airborne as a virus, thankfully, is pretty difficult. Because otherwise, yeah. there'd be a lot more. So it would be more likely, naturally, to occur bite past or right. bodily fluids yeah. pass yeah you know, like agv yeah. or you know some of those so so a lot of a lot of stuff gets passed in, in that in that manner um that is not airborne which is really lucky for for us um so yeah it's either you're eating something or you come into contact with something or you know blood uh some fluids yeah, blood like that. Disease. and usually in a relatively short period of time once it starts drying out you know a lot of stuff doesn't do do too well when it when it dries out so that that would be the holy grail is an airborne infection kind of like like the flu yeah it's so scary yeah and you know like even here in the u.s you know measles and, and polio right. and right. you know they're seeing diseases they haven't seen for you know a long long time right and it's a big melting pot of people coming together right. so you're especially with the virus because we talked about earlier how if you get two viral diseases at the same time, they can blend into turn into you know totally new Frankenstein viri, viruses, viruses or viri. Ooh, that I don't know. Viruses. Viruses. We'll go with viruses. viruses. Yeah. Plural, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Pigs. So, pigs are the the go to for that one. I mean, pigs are yeah. are really and and you can even look up like like bats um, have been shown to kind of be part of that whole mixture. So, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so and a lot of mammals but, yeah, will, gonna... will mix around and then yeah, things get transmitted. Um, um, out of that I'm, I'm i don't know of any and, and I'm, I'm sure there could, there's been research on this about how similar viruses have to be inside humans that for them sense. to mix yeah because there are because I know families in, you know right, it's like even plants right. can't you know if they're too yeah, far apart yeah. so um i know in pigs i think there's a little bit more lead way for those but i don't think there's all that much either i need to look into that but but again it's one of those things that you know when you're dealing with something like that 
I mean, nature's constantly mixing things up. So who knows? You know, two billion what, pigs to experiment. Two with. billion <laughs> pigs. There you go. I mean, I mean, that's two billion experiments time after time. We actually have some really good questions. Oh, good, 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 good. So what about zombies in environments without oxygen or atmospheres? For example, zo zombies walking along the ocean bottom or in space? I'm going to say they die. <laughs> like, dead, dead. Because, you know, the, the oxygen, you need it to fuel the energy that allows your muscles to move yeah. and so forth. So without oxygen constantly being replenished, your system shuts down. Yeah, I mean... Again, if we're talking just infected, yeah, I, I, I'm not a big fan of, like, space zombies. Although that'd be a great movie. I'd totally ooh, watch ooh, it. Yeah, I would too. Um, but there was a movie back in the 70s, I believe it was called either Z Zombie with an Eye. I don't think it was Zombie 2, but yeah, Zombie with an Eye. I forget the, the, the director's name. Anyway, there was a case of a zombie walking across the bottom of the ocean, and he fought a shark. So I think awesome. I've seen that yes. one. That's awesome. Yes, yes. Great. great. Yes. <laughs> I saw uh, Ruckstall in there. Yeah. Is nice. <laughs> nice. Then someone asks, why would or wouldn't shooting a zombie in the head kill them in the brain? Why would or wouldn't? Hmm. Well, okay. We're, we're, we're thinking here. Um, so my question is how much brain do you need to continue to walk forward like what parts of the brain could you go by with just the brain stem you know to, to move if you are i guess once you knock them over would they have the ability to okay, even back stand back yeah. up and i guess it depends I'm going to go with, it would have the same, it would have a less effect than it would shooting an uninfected human. I think you would have a better effect, you know, shooting a human to try and kill the human than shooting the zombie in this, in the brain, unless you took out enough of the, you know, things like the control, the involuntary muscle system, um, and the, you know, the feedback for walking and so forth. They, they may not kill it. They might just drop to the ground and not be able to do anything until you walk by and it does the old reach out yeah, and right, right. thing. Yeah, I'm saying any little bit of damage, I think, to the to the brainstem, I'm going to say that's going to that's going to do a number on them, I think. Yeah, I so would, shoot for I'm, the neck rather I'm, I'm go, than the head. I'm going to say if we're looking at kind of classic zombies, I don't want to say classic zombies because there's so many different types, mm -hmm. that if they're already somewhat impaired and then there's a little bit of damage, I'm going to say... Is, as long as you're getting in that brainstem area, yeah, you're you're pretty good with them being maybe not like you said incapacitated 100%. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's gonna be it for them, I think. Yeah. Unless you kind of walk up and are you are you alive? Oh, God, <laughs> yeah. I mean, after you drop them, put a couple of rounds yeah, into the back tap. of their neck. Double tap. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Always a double tap. Any others? Nope. Oh, okay. Um. Wow. This went fast. Seven that minutes did yet. Go fast. Wow. Isn't this fun? Yes. <laughs> I love yes. this. Yeah. I love just chit chatting and talking about zombies and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, much yeah. fun. And, and scientifically and yeah. And yeah. And it's it's interesting. So do you think there are any people working on something like this in the world? I hope not. Yeah. Uh yeah. no, I don't I mean, I feel like there's there's more things more dangerous than say a zombie virus because the infection would be if from me to you, like why not just brew something that's airborne that okay. you can yeah. easily spread from person to person? And so if it's, like I said, if, if it's something that I have for a long time, but I'm not symptomatic, but I can be infectious, that's kind of the go-to right there. You know, something that we can't really yeah. fight off. You know, we, we talk about like bird flu. We have a really tough time managing bird flu in our own, own body because our mm. immune system doesn't really do well with that. So something like that yeah. is more frightening to me I guess. yeah so i guess if you're if your goal because it's a it's a non-targetable weapon i mean yeah. you release it and it yeah just kills indiscriminately so you have to be kind of a doomsday person to begin yeah. with trying to bring about the end of the world and then why bother with zombies other than it's just kind of entertaining yeah like, it could, yeah it could be we'll give the human race a fighting chance right. you know as opposed to just everyone you know pukes their guts out and dies and one of the things that that i always think about and i, I joke about but i'm kind of serious about too is like if there is let's say a zombie apocalypse and someone gets infected don't shoot them immediately really here's why this is going to be interesting yeah so 
I, my, again, my, after we watched Train to Busan, my wife is like, if I ever get infected, because we talk about weird stuff like this. She Every says, husband wife yeah, does. Yeah, we yeah. have this conversation. She says, shoot me before I turn. I'm like, no. She's like, why? I was like, what if you're the one that's immune to it? She goes, okay, mm. shoot me after I turn. I was like, okay, I can do that. Yeah. Okay, that um, makes sense. So, because there's immunity out there, right? Yeah. So some people may become infected like Ebola. Like your survival rate is 50-50, uh, right around oh. that. Um, so there are people that um, have some immunity to that because they survived it the first time. So now they have, like, there's an article that said, like, 40 years later, you survived Ebola then, you're still immune to it. Cool. Yeah, which is oh. pretty crazy. So every time I watch, like, Walking Dead and somebody gets bit and they just cap them, I'm like, no! <laughs> That person could have been <laughs> yeah, they, they, the cure, uh, but you just shot them, so you never know. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, wow. Okay. 856. Let us jump over, and I want to run over to Amazon here quick and just do a link. So, we didn't actually get to uh, talking about preparing yourself for the zombie apocalypse. Oops. It helps if I could spell. Hey, wow. It's smarter than yeah, I am. Yeah, he knows what's up. Okay, so we're gonna. I just want to bring up Brandon's book here because it actually, you know, once you go down the zombie apocalypse rabbit hole, you start thinking, oh my gosh, it's really easy for this to occur. Here we go. How do I protect myself? <laughs> and he wrote a book on it. And why are you not? He doesn't like oh. to click. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, this was this was one of those things where a buddy of mine and I we just got to talking about zombies, kind of just mm -hmm. like we are now, and it was one of those things like we just have to write this down. We got to get it out of our brain at least, <laughs> um, because we were approaching it from a scientific view. Because right. he, he's another uh, scientist, and uh, yeah, so we're just like let's just get this out, get in our get our out of our brain and kind of work out the way we would kind of prepare and stuff. So it's more scientifically mm -hmm. approached, if you will. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to maybe write another one, more of a fictional story with information in it as well. It reminds like like that. The Martian, right? The Martian was oh, a yeah, great yeah, book, yeah. but there's a lot of factual well, stuff in it. Yeah. I'm like, maybe I should do something. So like a, really a, cool. an even better version of World Wars. Yeah, I don't know. That's pretty or funny. you could, you know, the idiot's guide to zombie apocalypse, and it turns out how to yeah. start one. Yeah. <laughs> Rather yeah. than yeah. how to. This is how you begin. Yeah, because, right? you know, there's enough crazy people out there that'd be willing to buy that book. <laughs> Um, you know, or you have that one for ten dollars, and then you have how to prepare for right, it for right. twenty. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, marketing. But um, yeah. So the other thing, just uh, before we're before we're done, um, as crazy as like zombies seem, and I always say, yeah, I'm a zombie prepper. You know, I'm not really prepared for zombies, of course. But here's the important thing that I always tell people mm -hmm. is, if you can go down that rabbit hole and pretend. What if there were a zombie apocalypse? How would I prepare for that? If you can be prepared for zombies, you're prepared, prepared for, for anything. Anything. Tornadoes, hurricanes, hurricanes train floods, derailments, train dera forest like, fires. You've got all the stuff Chemical that you need. Chemical plants you can, down. You can evacuate if you need to. You can shelter in place if you need to kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you've been a resident here for... 20 years for 20 yeah, years 20, so you yeah. know firsthand all the yeah, how Allison important it is and everything. to be ready so we actually have a bug out bag but it's yeah. not designed to go live in the woods it's designed yeah. to go to a hotel or crash yeah. at a friend's place or yeah. something you know some change of clothing and you know, medicines and toiletries and yeah. stuff like that you know we, we're running off into the woods of Anyone here who knows how hard it is just to survive in the woods, it's it's me. It's yeah. not easy. I, so. I always tell my 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 students that when we talk about like, oh, I'm gonna run off in the woods and survive, I'm like, oh, to this website, <laughs> and he will tell you. <laughs> that's right. He will let you know how difficult it yep, is to yep. find calories out there. Yeah. All right. So, uh, wow, one minute left. Great, great talk. Fun. Oh, yeah. do we have? He wants to see your mug. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Um, well, wrong way. Yeah, it's backwards. <laughs> yep, there we go. Uh, a buddy of mine uh, got this for me for my birthday. 
And I told him, I was like, I will, I will <laughs> put it in every video possible because I think it's the coolest thing ever. Awesome. Um, so I was like, ah, oh, this is awesome. So it was a great 40th right. birthday for me. Okay. So at this point, again, it was great having you here. I'm going to put a question out to the viewers there. Would you like us to continue this discussion now and talk about zombie preparation and preparedness? Mm. Or should we find some new topic to move on and some other get, you know, you know can, should Mix I bring should I bring Professor Lori back or I feel like I'm on a game show here, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> you made it through round two wow. now. Okay. But can you go the whole distance? So uh I know next week I was looking, yeah, if we need some planning, you can't just show up every oh, week. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um next week I if those of you who follow alone may have seen uh Donnie Dust who was considered to be one of the potentially strongest players ever tap out in eight days uh, due to eating a bad muskrat and coming down with horrible food poisoning. Mm. And so it seemed uh, it might be worth talking about first aid in the wild, plants you can use to deal with things like dysentery, cuts, burns, that sort of thing. So next week will most likely be wild first aid um and then who knows what happens after that but uh yeah we will try and get together again and do this again yeah cool, cool. all right uh anything else from the mini weather nope okay uh words of wisdom this week wash your hands yeah wash your hands a lot Ooh, and perhaps even use workman's friend yeah. barrier skin cream i can't guarantee it works against zombies because they won't let me have them in the lab um but it does protect against poison ivy which is almost as bad yeah. okay at this point i'm going to start hitting buttons to shut this down thanks for watching thanks guys